Welcome to Costa Conversations. I'm excited because we have two legends with us today, Pew Culture and Jay the Shooter. Now, here's the thing. Is there such thing as creating a new face for the Second Amendment? I think so. And I think after this conversation, maybe you'll think so too. If you uh, haven't heard of what it, what is referred to as Pew Party, it's um, at this point a three-time annual event. Hopefully we can get to number four. We went to number three. That really does a great job of introducing new shooters, novice shooters, and people who are firearms enthusiast into the space by showing off guns that are just hard to get or unobtainium, full autos and others. So guys, let's go ahead, jump into it, talk to Jay the Shooter and Pew Culture, figure out what they got going on, and then go from there. Let's get into it. Gentlemen, what's going on, man? How you doing? Hey, hey. All right, I got, we got everybody on. We can hear everybody. We do. All right, sweet. So, to the, I guess this is the left. To the far left, we have the one and only Pew Culture. To the center the stage, goat. we have Jay the Shooter, looking like a straight stud. We got the guns in the background. <laughs> what, what, what what kind of sunglasses are those, bro? Just the Terminators? What what are they called? Nah, man, these are some Prados, man. Okay. Um, some I picked up. Okay, okay. I see you. A man of taste, a man of culture. I see you. Of course, rocking big the baller, big baller. Shirt. Rocking the Pew Party 3 shirt, which I still want one. I will buy it from you if that's required. That's fine. And of course, myself, Aaron, or Armed Atlas, host of Costly Conversations, and uh, a few other things that I can't tell you about just yet. So let's jump into it, guys. I, I just got back from Pew Party 3. I had a great time. What was that like for you guys to put on the event? Or let, let's start in your mind. What is P Party Three? If you just elevator pitch, we'll go with Jay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I usually pause and I give it to Dow because Dow does a, a really good job of explaining Pew Party Three, man. Um, but Pew Party Three started off as is. It was, it was really organic, I'd say. Um, I say it's organic because Dahl and I, we, we met, we, we did a couple of events, man. We, 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 we got to shooting around. Uh, we became friends. Um, we, we had similar taste in um, just two-way. You know, we had a love for two-way, man. We, our backgrounds are, are, are very different, very, very different from one another. Uh, the way that we create our content is very different. But I, I, had, a, I had a real real like and and uh i like the way he created his content man so we became friends and and in our creation of our friendship we we kind of just said look man let's let's do something um where we can create an opportunity for our followers to come and experience what we experience um from that time Everybody knows me for having a lot of machine guns. Everybody knows Pew Culture for having some of the most crazy op unobtainium items that you'll ever find, that you'll ever get your hands on. So that was the creation of an opportunity to say the average shooter is not going to have the opportunity probably ever to touch these machine guns or to touch these MP7s or or, or 249s or crazy stuff that, that are very common to us if, we, if you've been in the military or or you have friends with uh, some very interesting pew collections. So now we were on a hunt for a name. Okay. We, we, we had this thing that we wanted to do. We had to give it a name pew culture and all of his crazy creativity. He's the man when it comes to names. And, I, and if, if I recall correctly, he came up with the name pew party and it, it just stuck. When I heard it, I knew that was it. And I said, let's run with that. Now we needed a date. So we said, all right, when are we going to do this? When are we going to pop this thing off? Um, and less than a month from the time that we conceived the idea, um, here we were. We said, man, let's look, our birthdays are coming up. Let's do something that's really dope for our birthday. Let's throw ourselves the best birthday party that we probably could ever could ever do. And Pew Party was thrown around our birthdays. Uh, we're both cancers. So I'm July 7. I think he's July. What is it? Uh, July. It's terrible. I don't even know my business partner's birthday. What is it like 13, 14th or something? 
18th. 18th, somewhere there, right? Somewhere there. He probably gave you a wrong number, knowing him. <laughs> so we we so we wanted to celebrate our birthdays, man, and um and that's that's what kind of kicked off Pew Party. We didn't know what we had. Um, it was a big hit, big success. We had millions of views on social media. It went crazy viral. Uh, thanks to some of the people that showed up, the Tactical Turkeys, Kick Up Dust, and um, Watched Out Tactical. Uh, uh, Rob snapped. That that guy is an awesome videographer. He created some of the best videography that that we've had thus far for any pew party. We still reign his stuff is supreme. Um, so pew party just came. It, it became this thing. So. Uh, when we kicked it off initially, it did so well. Now our our heads got back to thinking, and we said, "Okay, man, how do we up what we just did?" You know, we didn't we didn't know. Here we are going into pre party four. We didn't know what we had on our hands. Um, so so now our goal every year is is how do we do something that's so crazy that doesn't look like what we did the previous year? How do we bring something um, to the table that people can can come back and say, "Hey, I came to pre party two. Pew Party 3 is going to be totally different, but I dig it. I, I see what you guys are doing there. I'm going to reinvest and come back to enjoy myself again um, at an event that I went to the previous year. And oh, by God, it's better than a previous event. So that's that's our goal every year um, with these different iterations of Pew Party to give you something that you haven't experienced previously. So that's that's awesome, first of all. And that that is the dilemma when you have an event that's annual. It's like, OK, well, is anybody new going to be there? What's so different? I've already been three times. I'm going to skip this year. You know what I mean? And I don't want to get into that rut of complacency or just kind of just another day, you know, in the neighborhood type thing. But I'm curious, Dal or Pew Culture, what did he miss? What did he leave out? I'm going to let you go with it. So, so Pew Party, basically, we have we have the two of us, right? So we have these awesome experiences. We do some very cool stuff behind the scenes that people don't even get to see. One of the things we're going to be doing actually in, in a few weeks, um, and you know the experience we're going to have is insane, right? So um, I spent my time, you know, in working for the United States military, traveling all over, all over the all over the world, having some pretty cool experiences, unforgettable memories. And if anyone looks at my stories, they may see me post some nuggets from that all the time, right? So I know the power of having memories that you will never forget, right? Um, and experiences that you will never forget. So I think, you know, one, being able to facilitate that for the for the wider community um, is is a blessing in itself. And then we take we take those experiences and we also leverage it to bring in people so we can actually educate them as well, right? So um, bringing them in, you know, getting them uh, at Pew Party 3, we, we certified quite a few people and stopped the bleed. So many people came in uh, with no, no prior knowledge of how to stop, you know, uh, serious uh, arterial bleeding, and they left with 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 the nationally certified, um, showing the importance of 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 hearing protection. Some things you can do to circumvent using hearing protection, like suppressors. Uh, it's really you know knowledge put out there, but not in an official or or pressing way where you feel like you're in a classroom, right? We use fun-based experiences to bring people in and then insert these nuggets. Uh, you will leave with more information than you than you came with, but it didn't feel like you came for information. Wow. So first of all, I love that, especially when you say like you're trying to create an environment that promotes learning without shoving learning down your throat in a way that's uncomfortable. You know, like, mm-hmm. hey, like we're having a great time here. And by the way, did you know you know, exactly. Like just kind of exactly. for the ride in a way that they can appreciate. So. so now you have people who attend and now they can tell you the difference between subsonic and, and supersonic ammo, how you achieve uh, subsonic velocities, right? They learn these things, but it's not, they're not sitting there, you know, saying, hey, let me, let me teach you about this. No, we, 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 we hook you in with, with this product that you're now interested in. And then we tell you the science behind it, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 it's a way of implanting information without being, uh, overwhelmingly informational. Yeah. 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 And that's something I think is difficult for a lot of people. They don't want to feel preached at. And also the same people who don't want to be preached at oftentimes need the most preaching. Like they're the most lost to the the firearms conversation. Yeah. Very much so. I I guess you can kind of call us the Montessori of 2A. (laughs) 
<laughs> right. Did. All right. Well, let's let's kind of dig deeper into this last event because you guys, you know, obviously you gave away a ton of stuff. Somebody walked away with like probably ten plus thousand dollars worth of guns from like Q and would you guys give away a fix or a mini fix or something like that? Or suppress we gave away three three so actually we gave away three mini fixes. Golly. Um we gave away three mini fixes. Um two of them were provided by Q, the other was provided by uh, Freedom Outdoors. Heck yeah. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. And like what what do these guys get for I guess throwing in stuff? Are you guys like saying like, hey I'll shoot your guns or like do they just wanna participate in this kind of thing? Do they see the value? Oh yeah, so there's 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 extreme value in 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 um, in having the products because right now let's if we if we look at numerically, um, our demographic represents one of the largest growing, you know, um, gun buying entities, right? Right. Um, into a so you know having these products, um, you know, having the largest growing demographic of gun owners educated on what products they might want to buy, you know, or get right. into. Um, is, is a huge benefit. Right. I mean, when you when you consider that there's a large and uncomfortable amount of people who see handguns and refer to them as Glocks in such an interchangeable way, when there's, you know, thousands or probably even tens of thousands of known models of handguns that people can tell you about, mm-hmm. but every single handgun is a Glock and every Glock is a 9 or a 40, it's like, bro, 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 bro no. Like there's a lot of really cool guns out there, like the brand yep. new, or um, if we can call it brand new, uh, RM1C from Ross Martin. They came out, Correct. which I thought was yep. amazing. I was like, wait, Coley yeah. Noir literally just did a video hyping the heck yeah. out of this gun, first of all. Hmm. And then yeah. I get a chance to shoot it and give you guys my own evaluation, which that video will be up on Armed Atlas within the week. But that, that was really cool for me. Like that was my moment. Yeah. I was just like, oh yeah, these guys did it. It was worth the trip. Absolutely. Yeah, and the unspoken, you know, uh, thing about Ross Martin is that you know they do have a they do have a a mind they're a minority owned company, right? So, right. Um, yeah. you know, and that's that's you know the reality is that's a big deal, right? Um, that's a big deal, and you know we are super proud to be you know the first to to kind of uh, host them. Mm-hmm. in that in a live in the live fire manner um mm-hmm. so you know we hope the best for the company and if they do grow to be a, a you know a large company we 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 own the, we own the badge of honor of being the first to actually showcase them mm-hmm. you know uh to the public so it's it's right. it's pretty cool and uh realistically if you have one of these first iterations of this pistol that's a piece of history it is it's something yeah. that you, you know, some people tend to overlook, right? That's a piece of history, you know. Um, so e- even if they were to not become a huge company, even if they were to, you know, close their doors, which we don't, we don't anticipate, um, having a copy of that pistol is a piece of history that, you know, when I'm an old man, I'll tell, you know, oh, this was the first X, Y, Z, you know. So um, it's, it's pretty cool to, to even be thinking forward into having something like that in your inventory that you can show later on. Yeah, no, actually, before I let you go, Jay, because I, I know you're burning to talk, I had a chance to talk to Chris, who is the CEO of, we just lost uh, Pew Culture, but he'll be back in a second. Uh, we just, um, I got a chance to talk to Chris, and that was, that was a crazy moment. It was crazy that we were able to, like, literally have a conversation with the guy who, you know, obviously him and his team had the vision to bring this product to market and um, really put their money where their mouth is, put their money where their dream is and make it happen. Jay, if you would go ahead and just kind of talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, for those who are listening, if you have not had the opportunity yet to get your hands on the RM1C, you you might want to do that. I mean, just to, to touch the gun. Uh, well, before you even touch it visually. And I think you can attest to this, Aaron. Um, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful platform. Now, when you touch the gun, you actually put your hands on it ergonomically. It just fits. It just molds into your hand. It feels, it doesn't feel like the price of the platform, which is roughly, I think, about a 400 and 
400 and some odd, not even up to $450 in cost. Yeah, yeah. But the platform itself, uh, it feels so good in hand. Now, shooting the platform, before you put a, it, it comes optic ready, right? Before you even put an optic on there, I have seen um, and actually done myself some of the tightest shot groups that you you probably would ever, ever, ever experience out of a platform outside of a 2011 platform. So I was impressed right off the back. Um, and I, I shot it with some of, with, with a variety of different um, ammunitions um, from different brands. But shooting it with my SD ammunition, I must say, um, it, it 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 was it was pretty impressive just with the level of uh, reduced recoil that I was able to push out of the SD ammunition through that platform. So I think those two paired together is, is was pretty amazing. But the gun itself, man, I'll say, um, it's it's one of the ones that when people I get a lot of new people coming to me who who doesn't even don't even have a concealed carry license and they're asking, hey, what should I buy? What should be my first purchase? Due to the price point. The ergonomics, um, the quality of the platform, I tell them right away, look, there's, there's a new gun. There's a new guy in town who just came out with this platform. You might want to go give them a try before you go and spend money elsewhere. That is a glowing endorsement. Um, the one thing that Pew Culture mentioned was, or he, he, the words left his mouth, you know, whether they're here forever and become a huge, you know, staple in the community or they're gone tomorrow. One thing that I was, I'm very concerned about with smaller companies, because it, it does happen from time to time, is, you know, a company like uh, with Remington, ooh, with, uh, Remington is a mess. I, would, I, I, would, I wouldn't call Remington a small company, though. I mean, well, in, yeah, well, yeah, yeah it's in, so just to yeah. drill my well, point it's, down, it's, a, it's a, good, go a good point to the point that they have been in a community. They were a staple in the community for a yes. long time. If they can fall, right. then right. how dare a new company come up and, you know, have the audacity to to try to be a you know to stand itself up at a time like this post COVID. Yeah. But the, my point being is that the the platform, the Arm One C platform that they produce, is has a lot of cross compatibility. Even I believe the sights. Uh, who? Oh, shoot, what's the compatibility for the for the iron sights? Um, I believe I believe it's the um, the Springfield. Uh... XD line. Yes, the, uh, the that's what Chris said. Is that the sights are compatible with Springfield XD? The magazines are compatible with. Well, I was gonna say the CZ. Uh, was it PO one or one of the CZ? P10C. The P10C. P10C. But mm -hmm. uh, according to you and your viral video that you you put out, it you can pretty mm -hmm. much run whatever magazine you find, more or less. So, so you know, um, you know full transparency on that, they don't necessarily lock in, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm more, um, so I can put a, a 320 mag in there, it will stay in, I don't have to hold it in, I can, you know, I can run through an entire magazine, um, but it's not designed for that. So, so you know, my, my video is doing something that the gun isn't designed to do. I don't think, you know, I'm pretty sure when I showed it to Chris, he was just as surprised as anyone else looking. Um, <laughs> So that is not that is not a, a feature of the gun. It's not designed to hold those magazines magazines in. However, I was pretty impressed because I've done this with many. I'm a curious dude. I test things. When I test things, I test stuff. I, yeah, yeah. You know, I test. I test. You know, um, my mind goes crazy. I and I go testing things. You know, and um, and I put the first mag I put in there was a was a S15 from Shield Arms. It was just a joke. I was like, ah, what if it works? And then it worked. A whole mag. So wow. obviously I'm like, well, I'm not going to stop there. So, mm -hmm. you know, I I only had the S15 because that's what I carry. So I went home and I got all the mags I have. <laughs> I grabbed all the mags and I came back and I tested it out. And, you know, all the mags ran. That's funny because so, it's not always the case. A lot of platforms... No. You, you put this mag in, it's not going to work with this. Maybe it locks in, but it's not going to feed. It's not going to, you know, chamber yeah. correctly. It's just, it's a mess. So it doesn't, it doesn't lock in for, for most of them, right? Even mm -hmm. if the width allows you to keep it in because it's tight, right? Mm -hmm. um, into the mag well. So it doesn't lock in for most of those. However, with the, with the, uh, our, the S15s from Shield Arms, mm -hmm. with the 320, with um, a few other ones, uh, the P10s will lock in. You can you can run so basically this is for me it's more like all right well if, 
if I was really, really out there, you know, and you know, this is like apocalyptic type stuff, you know, right. like if if I was really, really out there, the only time I would put someone else's mag from a different platform in the gun is if, you know, that was my only option. You know, I was looting. Right. I was, you know, I was I was scavenging for 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 a, a mag with live ammo. Activated the it's just, perk. <laughs> it's yeah, it's just it's just really cool that it will actually cycle though with most yeah. of the magazines that you put through it. Yeah. So but that that's interesting, and I'm glad you did that experiment because it, I think it gives a lot of people peace when it comes to platforms. It's like, okay, well, just because um, it doesn't have the extreme aftermarket support that Glock has had for generations at this point it feels like or just because mm-hmm. it doesn't have um the same kind of r&d budget that um sig has doesn't mean it's not mm-hmm. a darn good platform designed to really yeah. you know put in work so you yeah, know it from my testing so far has indicated that it is probably going to be a super reliable as far as being able to cycle rounds, feed rounds uh strike primers um you know, different types of primers and actually be able to ignite that powder every single time. I think it's definitely up there. It is a little bit oversprung from my analysis. Yes. Um, so you're going to find a little bit more snap than some some other competitors. However, mm-hmm. that's the trade-off, right? So right. Um, that reliability. So if you get into like a SIG uh, 320X5 uh, Legion, um, you're probably going to have a much flatter recoil impulse However, you will definitely um, not be able to run certain, you know, harder primers and get consistent uh, ignition of your powder. Yeah, I'm actually testing a, um, a super custom CZP07. It's got like $2,000 worth of work done to it, which is a lot, mm-hmm. which is probably too much. <laughs> but yeah. the, the point is, the, the guy who loaned me the firearm, he said he actually mm-hmm. changed out the striker. And because of that, it, it has a harder time with harder primers, so he really only runs good ammunition, quote unquote, through it. Yep. That yep. you know has yep. a, you know good quality primers that aren't you know too hard. Yeah. And it'll run, although the gun can double strike, but even still, there's that's concerns for some people. But like you yeah. said, RM1C not a problem. Yeah, no, I think it's really designed for the person on a budget because you know mm-hmm. you you don't have ammo constraints. You can run anything. You probably you could probably shoot uh, 380 through it. <laughs> You know, um, don't try it. I might. It's not though. legal advice. Um, you know, don't try it. I, I might. Uh, you know, as soon as when Chris and them told me that they were sending the pistol, I said, I'm probably going to avoid my warranty. Let them know uh, right off the bat. Right. Um, so that's that's just what I do. I said, listen, I'm probably going to avoid my warranty. Most of the things I do, you're not even going to be able to share on your platform because it's definitely not what you're going to recommend to your you're right. gonna see my face. Right. So I mean you've done some wild stuff like there's this trick shot that you like to do where you have the cell phone and the gun or it's usually mm-hmm. like some sort of suppressed twenty two and the gun is sitting mm-hmm. over your shoulder and you're using the gun the the uh, cell phone camera to aim for mm-hmm. reference. And then mm-hmm. somehow you're hitting steel at you know, twenty plus yards away it looks like. I don't I don't know. Like what what is this? Twenty shot? plus we do we we do we do I think the, on the over the shoulder we get up to like Maybe like 200 yards, actually. Yeah, um, um, Making me feel bad. It's <laughs> yeah. not an easy thing yeah, no. way, man. If I, if I can add, I mean, I've, I've tried it. So it takes a lot of stabilization, a lot. Of, I mean, it's, it's not easy. Right. I've seen this dude Put do it, a lot of, with a 22 uh, machine gun <laughs> rifle with mine. It's right over there behind me. I've seen him do it with that. So got to get a guy credit. Stay on target and get the target every single time. I was like, yo, this guy's different. <laughs> yeah, I think it's important to understand that we all have skill levels and we should all want to work to be better. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, let's all be like you, man. <laughs> no, no, nah, man. Honestly, I think if you know, a lot of people <laughs> don't understand that you know. So I'm not from the U.S., right? So I'm not from the U.S. And as soon as I touched down in the U.S., I, you know, I was like, all right, well, when I pick up my luggage and my Second Amendment. You know, <laughs> so, um, so, you know, I, I, I definitely embraced this culture from the get go. And, um, I've been shooting from the day I landed in America. Well, not, let's not, we wouldn't say the day I landed, but you know, like within, I, I landed into boot camp, So I was definitely shooting. <laughs> you know? yeah. Um, now, 
Rumor has it this guy came to the U.S. during the military so he could shoot. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the uh, that's the lore, the pew culture lore. <laughs> yeah, that's no, funny. that's funny. So um, my, I want to I want to just explore really quickly um, the relationships that you guys have developed throughout the years because Jay is known, like he said earlier, for having just random guns and building guns, and you had a rifle company at one point, and then you were putting fifty. Um, sorry, a Desert Eagle and turning it full auto with you and uh, Mr. Wilk. Mr. Wilk, yeah, that's, that's the man right there. Yeah, you guys were collaborated on that project and had pretty much yeah. the world's only fully auto, a Desert Eagle, uh, one of one, also a five seven, and and some yeah. other projects that you guys have gone extremely viral for. Worked with a lot of cool people, um, and obviously, um, Pew Culture, you really well known for doing a lot of stuff with night vision. A lot of full auto stuff, uh, working with G and just doing some really, really cool stuff. Like stuff that makes guys like me a little bit jealous. I'm not even going to lie. I'm like, dang, I want to shoot that. <laughs> yeah. How much is a ticket? I got to go out there and shoot this guy, man. But how did we, I guess, it, you didn't start shooting yesterday. It's not like you just popped up, but you ne wouldn't have necessarily have called yourself, um, I guess, the biggest, newest faces in the Second Amendment space just um, as soon as you started, how did you, I guess, leverage the growth and then leverage the opportunity? Because this is an opportunity we all get. It lasts for so long. Uh, not we all get. We can sometimes have um, to, to be present in this space. And then how are each one of you le leveraging your opportunity to make Pew, uh, Pew Party 3 and Pew Party 4 and so on a thing and also to, to benefit the community around you? Man, you know, that's a that's a very... That's a very, very difficult question to answer because um, I think if you ask either of us, would we be here today um, with the with the with the company, with the share partnership, with um, you know, with one of the dopest companies? Uh, I'm talking about Silencer Shop um, as a as a title sponsor, and also uh, Q, who makes arguably the best rifles in the industry. Um, if you were to ask us here, uh, I would say when we first started this, would we be here today? The answer would be absolutely not. Um, would we, if you if you'd ask me, would we make history with uh, the Flotto Desert Eagle, get the gun in a, in a Call of Duty game where people can unlock it and actually shoot it? Um, I, I would have never thought that. Um, if you'd ask Dal, Dal, how many years ago um, would he be here today, um, doing what we're doing now? And and like you said, there's a lot of things you guys don't see behind the scenes, and we we I constantly tell him, I say, man, we need a full-time camera crew to capture some of the conversations, some of the dope ideas, some of the conception of the different things that are taking place. Some things that we haven't exactly birthed yet, but we've talked about and we're putting it to fruition. I mean, it's, um, I would say, man, I've attempted this business partner thing, uh, quite a lot, but my man, uh, Pew culture right here, man, he, he definitely is probably, the most innovative and best business partner that I can say I'd ha I'd have outside of Mr. Wilk, we made history, but we're all a team anyway. So um, it, it's a pleasure working with such a creative um, man. It's a blessing. I, I don't know what tomorrow brings because we could literally jump on a call, dream up something. Then next thing you know, that's the word. We're in full pursuit to bring that into fruition. And not only are we bringing something that we may dream up into full fruition, but we're not doing it selfishly. We're doing it to make sure that we can turn it around and give you guys that are listening to this an opportunity to come and participate in it. That would be my best guess at that answer. Thank you. Yeah, That's no, awesome. no, no. I, yeah, definitely well, well summarized, you know, I would like to echo the same, you know, like if you, how, man, you know, I don't think either of us have a, you know, a, a a real answer to that you know because sometimes we look at the things we're doing like you know we, we, we if you were there at pew party and you saw we had we were running in the airport you know literally we were running an airport and you look at that and you think how are we doing this right um but it's it's humbling it's a blessing and i think anyone who you know comes into the space whether you're coming as a just a consumer you know if you enjoy this space just stick to what you love you know, stick to what you love. Be authentically yourself, right? Um, we have leveraged, you know, uh, a lot of 
relationships that we've had and, and partnerships. So the good thing we were able to kick this off the ground by leveraging relationships from both our histories, right? Both our pasts and, um, and bringing those relationships together um, to create what is now Pew Party, right? And so whenever, I think one of the key things in any situation, if I had to give advice to anyone, is making sure that when you do establish any relationship that you bring value to that relationship, right? How do you add value? And if you're able to add value to every relationship that you're in, then more relationships will flourish, right? Um, because people will see the value that you add to this relationship and they would want to form a relationship with you as well, right? Um, so a lot of people are not able to take a step back and look in any relationship and think, how do I add value to this other person's, you know, um, or other entity's uh, situation? So that's one of the things that we always ask ourselves when we establish a relationship as a company, as a business, as an entity, as just morally, right? How do we how do we add value to this person? And if we cannot answer that question in between the two of us, then we have to reconsider, should we even engage in this relationship because we're not able to add the value like we would like to. Um, and I think if, if we all look at being able to add value to any situation, so for example, um, Armed Atlas comes to the Pew Party, right? Our approach, if we go anywhere, is to see how we add value, right? So that maybe next year, they'll want us to come back because we add value every time, right? Mm -hmm. So um, if that's one, I guess, piece of advice that I'll give anyone. Anywhere you go, add value. Add value to, the, to, your, to your followers, right? How are you, when people follow you and they watch your stuff, how do you add value in their scrolling, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe they see something or learn something. For example, my airport videos, if anyone has watched these, um, they do a lot of numbers online. They average a reach of 1.5 million views per video across the platforms, right? Yeah. And so those videos are interactive. They're real, they're not, they're not skits, they're real, but they're also informative. You learn things, you learn that you, you, you can fly with, with with uh, loaded magazines. Some people will see me challenging the the philosophies of the airline staff when they try to deny me for things that I know that I can do, right? Mm -hmm. And I stand my ground and I let people know that. So we're, we, you know, we're adding value. Uh, many people have stopped me even at airports and said, hey, I watch your videos and you know, I, I'm, I'm traveling with a weapon right now and I learned what to do from you, you know? That's You're awesome. adding value. So uh, that's all I would say. If you add value, you will always be good. That's great. I um, I see a comment that just popped up and said, love the one with the little kid recognizing you had a, a gun case. <laughs> yeah. I wish I had his contact information. That video has done like 2.3 million right now. Um, and I have no idea, you know, where he lives or anything. He's, um, he just randomly, I was in the airport. He was like, what kind of guns do you have? <laughs> you know, I was actually, luckily I was filming because I was about to record uh, how I, you know, do the check-in because there's a trick that I do with that, right? Um, and so I was about to record that and right when I'm getting to, he just interrupts and he goes, how, what kind of guns you got? <laughs> and his dad is looking like, bro, chill. <laughs> you know? He said, what kind of guns you got, bro? Man, I got to yeah. go back and watch that one. That's that's awesome. Like, I feel like, yeah. Um, and like Burnt Nugget, who is with us in the live audience, we're just said the kid's going to remember that for the rest of his life. Like people don't yeah. forget, people don't forget those moments. Those are canon events in the life of people and, and yeah. things that propel them into other portions of their life. Yep. And, and so that's what we hope to capture every time with Pew Party is to have, you know, to give people events that they will remember for the rest of their mm -hmm. life. Even if we, so even if we, we, we transition to something else, right. Even if we move on to something else, we want you, we want to leave with you, you know, thinking, man, Pew Party was awesome. Because <laughs> you know? right. there's a lot hey, of so, amazing so something things. That took place at, Go ahead, Jay. Sorry. I was going to say something that took place at Pew Party that I think uh, one of our guests will remember for the rest of his life is his first opportunity um, ever flying in a helicopter and also shooting out of a helicopter. So um, we had the 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 pleasure of hosting um, Twista 
uh, from Gun Camp, or, or you can say Twister Gun Coach on uh, Instagram. And nobody knew. I mean, this is Twister. You, you probably think he's been on private jets. He's been on helicopters. He, he's been on everything already, man. He's a, he's a big celebrity. He's been around for, uh, man, multiple decades, you know, when it comes to his music and his, and his celebrity. So the funniest video that Pew Culture did when, uh, when Twister got on the helicopter, I was there filming him before he got on the helicopter. He was hype. He was motivated. He was, he was excited. But nobody knew what took place inside the helicopter until we got that footage back. So if you guys go check out our platforms, you go see that footage. You're going to see real, raw, um, unedited. Um, well, I mean, when I say unedited, I mean, the, yeah, un- yeah, the reaction, the emotions behind his experience for the very first time in a helicopter. And I think that was that's something that I'll remember for the rest of my life. Um, and I know he will as well. So that's that was pretty impressive. So, you know, so just to be able to, you know, for example, to be able to say that, you know, we facilitated Twister's first time in a helicopter, you know what I'm saying? And a, a yeah. memory that he will probably live with for the rest of his life, right? Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it's just the cool, concept man. of even going up in a helicopter with a loaded firearm and having permission, yeah. not just, hey, I'm going to do something crazy, permission to fire live rounds out of a helicopter onto targets. That's incredible, bro. Yeah, yeah. So, Especially in, in this current American environment. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. In this America, to be able to do that. That's that's breaking down all barriers, man. It's just yeah. and not only that, just just being a minority and doing that. Mm-hmm. I mean, just think about it. Who does that? It's not only minorities that go to your events, so there's it's a oh no absolutely very no, not. wide no, no, no. span like no. I you know I see Big people. I see small people. I see young people. I see yeah. older guys. I see yep. um, like no, black, Latino white, and, Asian. Yep. I mean, yep. a couple Latino. Asian adults there. Yeah, a couple of people who are incredibly ambiguous. I'm like, I don't even know what you are, but I'm glad you're here. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> but it's truly a different kind of event. Most of, and I've been yeah. to plenty of. Events. I've seen an, I've seen I've seen a few ammo sexuals out there too. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I think everybody. Is yeah. I mean, I'm, um, I'm, hey, I'm you know, I, I don't shame when it comes to that. You know. <laughs> so no, but you know that is a, that is a pretty you know uh, interesting point because when we we'll say coming in from Pew Party One into Pew Party Two, even with our the location that we chose, you know, we were trying to get these guys locked in for this place for a while, and we didn't think that they took us seriously. You know, we told them, imagine. You know, in, in, you know, even just going back a, a few years, imagine, you know, a couple of black guys walking and tell you, oh, we want to, we want to rent out your entire facility. You know, we want to, we want to commandeer your entire facility. They were like, you know, rent out. We're like, you know, they're like, what do you mean? Basically the exact word I use is I just want to Airbnb it. I want the entire place. Yeah. The entire day, you know, tell us what you make in a day and we'll, 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 we'll cover it. So, you know, uh, they, I don't think they took us seriously, right? And then one day, Jay and I just said, you know, shit, let's get on a plane and let's just go pull up on these dudes. <laughs> so yeah. we flew down there. We just jumped on a plane, flew down there, um, and showed up in person. Let them see we were serious and we want to we wanna do this, right? Um, and coincidentally, right when we walked in, we're talking to the guy to explain who we are. And uh, one of the owners comes up super excited. He was like, hey, Sansa shop just called. They're talking about this pew party thing. And uh, and I'm like, that's us, pew party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and, you know, that's how we got the place for pew party. We locked down their entire facility for, for the entire day. Um, so, you know, it's that that's one of the challenges, you know, starting off is people taking you seriously right um now it's grown to a point that people have heard of it before we talk to them about it so it's pretty cool you know um, i mean but the, it, it makes sense that you you show up because there's, there's a lot of people who want to do things and there's a lot of scammers bro yeah, even in the yeah. 2a space people have big lofty ideas they want to do a thing hey can you participate can you send money can you write us a check yeah. for ten thousand dollars to promote your crap like bro yeah, like I've, I've, yeah, this is the third one today, you know. <laughs> oh, 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 we get, we get, we get that a lot, man. <laughs> you know, guys want us to, like, you know, 
guys want us to do a lot of things. Um, and we're like, you know, hey, you know, we we just got here. <laughs> um, but it, it also means that, you know, it's also a blessing because it seems that people, um, you know, I think they respect what we do and they, 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 they think uh, for the most part that we have something that's really good going. So, um, but yeah, people ask us for, for money and donations and, and, um, and contributions a lot now. So, yeah. You know, it's something yeah. sometimes, to sometimes, some, sometimes some ridiculous, uh, requests too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> You're like, what? Yeah. Where'd that come from? <laughs> yeah. I think it's the helicopters. They're like, they're like, oh, y'all got helicopters now? Okay. Right. They All don't right. know it's around. All right. <laughs> you know, right, right. you know, they're like, oh, y'all got helicopters? Okay. All right. Yeah. That's oh, funny. I got you so, right so then we have to we have to tell them how how expensive it is to wrap a helicopter. We have to have that yeah. conversation with them. Like, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, it 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 it's very expensive. The, putting on the event is expensive, right? It's expensive. Yeah. It costs it costs some 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 good some good change. And you know, because we like to bring people, we don't want to be subpar for our audience. We want to make sure that we bring them the you know best experience that we can do, right? So. Um, this year, I think the helicopters were a hit, uh, they were actually, you know, that's, that's a fact they were a hit numerically. They were a hit, you know, we were able to sell out two helicopters. So we sold out the first helicopter in advance, uh, and then on site sold out the second helicopter. So, yeah. So I think it's safe to say we've, we've both written probably the biggest checks that we've probably in in our tenure in business. We've, we've. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, so, that, so, that was that was. Well, uh, as well as it been a business was, and bringing in funds, we have to write checks out too. So just, just yep, really. Yep, that. yep. So you know, I mean, sometimes it's cool. It's cool that you're, you know, you're you're doing these things, but sometimes it hurts the amount you have to pay some people. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right. you know, that, that's yeah. funny, bro. Like that is you know. that is insane. There's just the thought, like, hey, um, in order to put on this event, which is going to be a lot of fun for people, we got to kind yeah. of put our money where our mouth is and yeah. Yeah. kind of take on assume risk, which nobody yeah. else has to. I mean, okay, we, we paid 200 bucks for a special package at Pew Party. Okay, we paid yeah. the base entry fee. There's no risk. <laughs> like, yeah. you're, not, you're, you're probably going to still make your rent if you went to Pew Party, even if you're not doing so well. But then yeah. there's guys like yourselves who you're putting kind of everything on the line saying like, hey, you know what? If anything crazy happens, something yeah. that we can't control... Because you guys have two, like at this event, two helicopters. A lot of people yeah. that you have not met a day in your life. A yeah. lot of ammo, a lot of guns. It's a lot of risk. It's a lot of, a risk. Lot of just, risk. Just, just those two items, those two helicopters. You know, the amount of liability, right? The amount of liability there. That's the thing that people don't. People say, "Hey, we want you to enjoy pew party and relax." And I'm like, oh, "We're running an airport here, bro. It's hard to relax. I'm sorry." <laughs> you know. And, and- I, I think what's interesting is you have one of the videos out there. You guys, if you go listen to it, you'll hear uh, you hear Pew Culture on the microphone saying, "If <laughs> if if that drone doesn't come down right now, I'm going to shoot it out of the air." <laughs> <laughs> because there's there's a huge risk of of helicopters flying and you having drones in the, in the, in the sky yes. in the airspace, basically. Yes. So that's very dangerous. Yep. That that enhances the risk factor um, 10x. So, so we had we same. we had to down that drone immediately. So yeah. it, it was just funny hearing dog. Uh, I was gonna shoot down, down I was, drone. I, 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 I was gonna put it down over the shoulder too. So you know, I was like, no, that would have been <laughs> the most viral video on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, this um, no, um, listen, no, that's but that's awesome. No, but there's a there's a lot of liability, you know, um, when when we talk about um, you know just putting on the event, the, the uh, you're taking you're, you're basically taking you know weapons that that are meant to contain mini explosions and and putting them in in strangers' hands at a at an unbelievable rate. Then we add helicopters to that, so we have you know there's so many things that can happen in a helicopter, right? So we add that to that. So there's a lot of liability that we take on, um, and 
every time those smiles and those the feedback is worth it um the, the people come back and they i mean you can see that they've had the time of their life some people i mean people literally say this is the best day of my life verbatim you know <laughs> And to think that you facilitated that moment for them is 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 beyond the feeling that you can replicate um, doing anything else. That's awesome. That that really is a cool thing. And well, let me just do this, guys. So, what's next? What's next for people? Can you can you share a secret? Can you share maybe some ideations? Maybe things that aren't even technically official. We haven't written it down, but these are some things I would love to do maybe next year or year after. Can you share? Oh, too boy. Soon, man. Too oh, soon. boy. Oh, yeah. boy. So I will say, okay, I will, okay I'll sh- I, will, I will share this, right? Very soon, Jay and I are getting on planes, right? Yeah, yeah. And we are going to start uh, meeting with some, some, some entities and people and governments and all kind of stuff, right? right. Um, and we are going to start weeding out some of the ideas that we have for P Party 4. Regardless, it will be epic. Regardless of what you know comes through and doesn't come through as far as what we're doing in this. And I will say it's, it's not even, it's crazy to say, but our <laughs> limitations is not based in finance. It's actually based in Will the world accept us doing this? <laughs> yeah. He said, "Will the world accept it?" Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, I mean, that's crazy. No, nah, that 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 is an honest statement right there. Um, we're dreaming up stuff, man. We're having conversations in every day. So, so mind you, we just we're probably went maybe three weeks off from Pew Party Three. Yeah, um, like we it literally just t- happened. Yeah, it literally just happened. So we probably took a week and a half off to really kind of catch up, catch our breath. And all of the great feedback that we've gotten from everybody, we literally got back to the drawing board immediately. And we've already booked booked flights to, I would say, one, two, three different locations in preparation for Pew Party 4. Back and to back. Back to back. Like, we're literally... We're just plane to plane to plane, just going. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're not and... taking, yeah, we're not taking any breaks, and you know, our, we're we're dedicated to making Pew Party Four the event to be at. We're gonna bring something so different um, that you you really haven't seen. Um, that's our goal. That that is our goal at the moment. Now, like 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 Pew Culture said, are we gonna find that location, that perfect location that is, that is gonna allow us to do what we're dreaming? That's the biggest. And, and, and I can say so far is is starting to look pretty epic already three weeks, I would say two weeks into planning. It's looking epic already. You don't want to miss it. Can I, can I spoil it? I, ha- I have an idea. And I'm like, ooh, you guys haven't talked to me, but I have an idea. Um, here's, here's what I want to see for Pew Party 4, 5, or 6, whichever one it's, it's physically possible to do. I want to see mm. Live Fire Tactical Course. Mm-hmm nobody nobody crack a smile and give it away that's what i want to see like i was like ooh, you know what i want to see next year you're trying to see... you're trying to read body languages aren't you i, I see mean, that's what i do that's what i do right <laughs> so so you know funny enough um that was something that we had planned to incorporate into p party three right wow okay yeah um we had planned to incorporate that into p party three um mm-hmm. However, we are still trying to navigate. Um, we have gaps in skill level with with mm. with our with our audience. So you know, some we have such a gap in skill level. When you do tactical courses, if you've ever done them, uh, they're typically very catered to a specific group of individuals, right. right? And we're dealing with the general public, so we're still trying to navigate. How do we? Uh, how do we navigate? The, 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 the gaps in skill level between each individual and keep it safe. And that's one thing that we have to uh, really work on because we don't, we, we don't like to give you half-ass stuff. You know, like we want to make sure that it's ironed out. And if it's not ironed out, then we have to scrap it. Right, because um, there are so some, it, it, some ways people have done it and some are yeah. cool, some are, uh, 
that's, yeah. that's interesting, yeah. but it, it doesn't cater to, you know, what you guys would like to do, which is get everybody involved and let them kind of run through the course and have a exactly. Break. So what I don't, what we don't like to do at, at P party is make anyone feel less than, mm. right? Um, so that's and you know we 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 believe in inclusivity, not exclusivity. So although we do some pretty unique things, we open it to everyone. That's, yeah. I mean, at, at P party one, we had a, a guy in a wheelchair shooting a, a, a you know two forty nine Bravo, right? Mm. Um, and I'll never forget seeing him on the sidelines. And I said to him, I just walked by and I said, hey, you know, what have you shot today? And he said, uh, I've just been watching. I said, absolutely not, sir. <laughs> Make a hole. Get this man a two. Get this man a two forty nine Bravo. Um, you know, and that 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 arguably made um, his day, probably his week, probably his month, right? But uh, so we have to figure out a way to navigate uh, the gaps. And if you know anyone watching has experience in that, then we're open to ideas as well. Um, we 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 may consult with some of the trainers and see how they're able to navigate that. Uh, without being a little, you know, too, too, too uh, aggressive with, with, because I find in the trainer world, and I'm, I, I have no problem calling out the trainers. I find the trainers a lot of time to be a little bit over the top. You know what I'm Often saying? Oftentimes. In, yeah. in, 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 in ideology, uh, mm -hmm. passion typically, passion typically sometimes blinds people and they don't mm -hmm. see how they come off to the rest of the world. And, you know, again, um, I don't think, you know, that if that's what you do and that's how you do it, then that's fine. I'm you know, everyone has their own game. They do what they want. I just believe that if you, um, it, it, it can be misinterpreted by the general populace and we want to make sure that we cater to everyone. So, right. so one of my best friends in this gun space, he, um, once upon a time said a lot of the firearms instructors are the guys who wanted to be drill sergeants in the military and never got there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but i but i think uh i would say from a from an intelligence standpoint you have to meet people where they are that's right and 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 that's one of the things that we're we're aiming to do is is meet that novice and maybe hopefully inspire them to um enhance their skills and grow to that level of you know whatever their goals are but to that next level shooter and they can find themselves doing a tactical based training or they meet the qualifications and standards and they've exhibited the capability to handle a firearm uh, safely in a manner that, you know, they can be selected to, Hey, you can, you've shown your skill that you can handle yourself well. So therefore come over here and con conduct this training. Um, that's, but it's, it's very difficult to, do, to, but that would be amazing to see if you could pull it off. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So imagine at a, at a one day event, it's very difficult to test that level of skill and to, to take that person over. And uh, so you gotta, you gotta have, you gotta test them, you gotta evaluate them. And we haven't cracked that code on that yet, um, but we are gonna crack that code. So uh, yeah, we got some ideas. We've been talking uh, quite a lot and we've, we are talking with some other individuals in the community and we're gonna try to, try to crack that code. And yeah. more so, I mean, we're not trainers. I mean, we don't, we don't purport ourselves as trainers, but one of the things that we, we don't have a problem doing is sharing our platform and bringing those qualified individuals in to be able to to offer um, those sessions, kind of like we, what we did with Whiteside Tactical Solutions, which was awesome, by the way, letting uh, a qualified in, uh, entity come in. They were actually at the NAGA convention, uh, a group that I've thought, Ooh, man, I should try to find a way to collaborate. And you guys beat me to the punch, which is yeah, which is fine. It's fine. I'm not I'm not hurt. Anyway, <laughs> no, it, it really wasn't us, man. I got I got to give credit to Carbon Q for uh, for for shedding light on 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 their so, greatness. Carbon and Q it was, is the patron saint, absolutely of, of of the gun world, doing a lot of things yeah. that most people don't see. Yeah, yeah. no, hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, very much well respected individual. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know, and you know, remaining pretty anonymous, like you know, in the shadows. You know what I'm saying? Know she's uh, so well. uh, right. Technically, you most most people have never seen her face before. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Wouldn't yeah. Know no, her she, if no, saw she, she, she beat me, bro. You say, yeah. People, I, I, I do maintain a certain level of you know disconnect, right? Mm -hmm. But she's on a on a higher level. I, I admire what she does because I'm like, right. I wish I could do that. Just you know, 
just, just exist. <laughs> I, I'm just like the ghost. She's she she's just like the ghost of you know of 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 pew life. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah. That's that's a great way to say it. And I would I wanted you talked about collaborating with Whiteside, and I'm like, man, collaboration over competition is something that I've I've seen, and it's been vital to this platform, mm-hmm. Cost of Conversations. We're at episode 97. Wow. And I've oh, never nice. done a solo episode. Let's clap I mean, up. I've, let's done, let's I've done like an announcement. Thing. Let's not gloss no. over that. Thank you. Let's clap it up for this man Thank for you. 97 Thank episodes. You. I'll take that. Um, yeah. We're almost at 100. I'm like, should I do something special? I don't know. Let's just keep it moving. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see, right? We'll see. But that said, every single mainline numbered episode has been a collaboration between me and another person. Some people have gotten a second or third shot, but yeah. there's been at least 90 original conversations with original people, uh, unique individuals rather. And I'm like, yeah. man, like this, this podcast, no matter how big or small it is, I have to thank every single one of those people who said, I'll give you an hour or more recently, I'll give you two hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, man, yeah. that's a sacrifice. If I, if I said, if I just random, random guy came up to you on Instagram and was like, Hey, can I get two hours of your time? <laughs> yeah. like, uh, okay yeah Are you, you crazy or what like yeah 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 no no definitely no collaboration over competition is it's definitely um it's the way right it's mm-hmm. it's the way it's not even and you know in many ways it's the right thing to do you know um bring people in help people that's what we like to do we like to open the door keep the door open and say hey come into this space right You there? Yeah. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really yeah hear you. Okay, sweet. Yeah. So, I mean, that's to be honest uh, with our platforms. You know, a lot of times when you see the content that we create, a lot of times it's not us in the content. You know, it's it's really bringing fresh individuals with yeah. fresh perspectives and 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 uh, expressions um, and reactions to shooting different platforms, and that yeah. right there is far better than you seeing myself or pew culture shoot a gun i mean we've shot tons of guns tons of machine guns tons of suppressors yeah. when you get that when you get to witness the kid in the video uh, at the yeah. airport or when you get to witness um someone who's never shot a farm for the first time shooting suppressed those are the reactions man that that really light up that's that's what's going to stop you in your tracks when you're scrolling down instagram and social media and say okay well let me see how this goes Right, it's just your yeah. more traditional person um, yeah. behind that platform. Or when somebody tries night vision for the first time. Yeah. Very much so. Do you remember your first night vision experience and what that was like? Yeah, it was trippy as heck. And even my second and third experience, I'm just like, how is this, <laughs> right. how is this possible? <laughs> your brain right. doesn't know how to, I guess, reconcile with what's happening. You know what I mean? So, so, so you're, you're, you're putting wings. You're putting that cape on somebody and saying, look, here, here is your superpower moment this is your moment where where you're holding that platform that you probably can't afford or you, you've never shot before or you're putting that night vision on your head and it's, it's just an experience that you can never but once again we said it before in this interview early on you're giving that person something that they're going to remember for the rest of their lives and it's going to start something it's going to it's going to wake something up in those individuals and they're going to want to come back and do it again and again and again uh, once again, that's what that's exactly the approach that we take with, with Pew Party. Um, we want to give those individuals those experiences again and again and again. Bro, that's awesome. And I'm I'm going to say this, man, like when I look at Pew Culture, I look at your page. It's it's true. I have a hard time finding you guys in the content. And I'm going to let you guys elaborate on that in a second. But it's it's a good thing. And then it's also kind of confusing for me because I'm like trying to find like a picture for the thumbnail. And I'm just like, well, <laughs> right. where the freak is this man? Come on. Can I can I see your face? But yeah, the, but you're 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 correct. I mean, even some of the most viral videos that exist on on like YouTube as a platform. Right. You see, like right. this new shooter tries out a 50 BMG or something just insane. You're just like, oh, it's going to be a whole mess. I guess I got to watch it. <laughs> it's like yeah. watching a train wreck. So. That's that's some of the beauty of it. And um, kind of going back to my, I guess, question or statement of collaboration over competition, you guys have done a really good job of, I mean, 
you specifically Pew Culture, most of the content that I saw, even like early on in my YouTube, uh, Instagram or YouTube career, um, it's somebody else in the content. And sometimes you would pop up, Correct. and I'm like, okay, so which one is, which one is he? Back when you went by uh, Juan Wick, yeah, which, yeah, which yeah. one is Juan Wick? It's not yeah. the girl. Okay, yeah, no, it's it's this guy. Okay, it's this guy. Um, and then, I guess one of your biggest videos, Jay, at least for a, a while, was you and GHG had done a small collaboration. I don't know how, how vast and wide that technically was. One of the videos that popped, or a couple of the videos that popped up were you letting him shoot some of your stuff. And there was a full auto AK and a couple of things. And it's just cool to see a guy who, even though he's in the gun space and doing really well for himself, try something that I don't think he's ever tried that before. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, that, that was probably, you know, what's ironic about that? We did our very first collaboration um, and I was still in the military at the time. So I went overseas and, and did a tour in uh, Germany. I went on military orders and that collaboration, once again, collaboration over competition, that collaboration shot my YouTube up tremendously. Um, I, I was I think I was in Switzerland uh, to go celebrate hitting 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Um, that, that was my trip that I took to do that. So I was at the top of this mountain. It was crazy. I went live. Um, so it is putting those guns in his hands was just a fun thing to do um, because he's super entertaining. I mean, you never know what you're going to get with people, but uh, but he's a super dope, talented guy, man. And, and and every time we collaborate, we have a tendency of going stupid viral. Um, so I, I, I love it, man. I love I don't care who you are. I don't care how big of a um, platform you have or how small of a platform you have. Um, that's the nature of Pew Party as well, just to kind of take it back there. And Aaron, when you came to Pew Party, I don't care if you were mixing with Twista, Black Rambo or anybody nobody made you feel like they were like their platform was bigger than yours. So therefore you had to go through all these loops and, 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 and different things to get to that individual. Everybody was open. Everybody showed love. It was a very inclusive environment. And that's, that's just how I try to live my life. Although we're busier now, sometimes my time is very limited, but ultimately when you see me out, that's the, or when you see Pew culture out, that's who we are. We're going to, we're going to welcome you with open arms. We're going to have a conversation. We're going to engage. Um, and we just want you to have your best pew day. You know what I mean? In our presence. And, and when I have some things, when I'm traveling, I'm always traveling with a couple machine guns or something. I love to put them in people's hands and get those responses. Um, uh, very obviously, uh, with, with safety in mind, but that's, that's like the best thing. Um, you can never experience. So one of my, one of my buddies had a had a birthday party a couple couple weeks ago. So what do I do? <laughs> friends, you know, friends let friends shoot machine guns on their birthday. So I took <laughs> took a lot <laughs> of crazy right. stuff out there, and uh, it's always good to just put some some real interesting things in people's hands that you know that are that are very common to us because we come across so many different platforms, so many different things, and it's always good to just put those platforms in, in other people's hands. And, and let them enjoy them for that moment. Okay, so what I'm going to do uh, before I let Doll go is actually, let, let me just let you go right now, if that's okay. I, I want you to share what you had on your on your mind, because it looked like you were just dying to say something. So the, um, you know, to piggyback off what, what Jay said, um, I have this thing that people see me at places and they'll say, man, you know, I loved when you shot this gun and what is it really like and whatever and my common response if i have that platform on me which you can ask jay everywhere i go i got a case full of guns with me uh jay, jay tries to fly light I, I'm, I'm coming in hot um so you know i mean well I, uh, you, you do fly for free your, your bags are free when you fly sir <laughs> <laughs> so um so you know I, I come in with the cases and if somebody says to me you know hey, what was this platform like? I go, you tell me, let's go shoot it. You know, um, That's awesome. I mean, I, I like, I don't like people. Uh, obviously, the, the most people have to experience things through the screen, right? But if we have the opportunity for you to experience it yourself, I'm always gonna, always gonna afford you that opportunity. Um, because I believe in us talking about an experience that we had versus me telling you about an experience I had. Um, I mean, but that's that is the truth. Most of the time we have to live vicariously and that's 
kind of something I had to teach myself is like, hey, when you're doing a gun review, when you're talking about a product, even when you're saying that a product, you wouldn't recommend it. We are proxies for the audience a lot of the time. And we have to share this experience. Oftentimes people get mad at Coley on the wall, one of the greatest uh, gun tubers of our of the era, right? Right. And he... Um, he's... And the new pew culture. And the new pew culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. yep. And the new pew culture. That was funny. <laughs> That was funny. Hey, so so interesting story behind that. We saw him at uh at the at the shot show basketball game. So uh, I, we walk up to we walk, walk up to uh Coleon. I said, "Hey man, I found your perfect host, co-host." <laughs> uh, <Pew> culture. <laughs> right? Yo, I was wondering how that conversation went cuz I I knew the conversation happened at some point, but I was wondering how it went if it was just like all love, you know, all love or it's like hey, okay, now you got to you know, pay royalties because you know we got pew parties to put on, man. Come on, bro. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a it was a big chuckle, man. Um, yeah, he just chuckled and kind of let it roll off. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So your thought? You go back to your thought. Oh man, so yes, so with Coleon Noir being one of the greatest, you know, gun tubers of our era, white, black, or otherwise, right? Like he is one of the kings of this sport that we're in. Mm-hmm. He does a great job, and people get mad at him because he's like, well, can't you say something mean about the gun? He's just having a great time shooting his gun. And obviously, if yeah. there's something really uh, absurdly negative, and a lot of these guns are made to a point where they're just going to run stuff, and they're going to be at least somewhat quality, right? Um, it's, yeah. it's, it's hard to find things that you dislike about a gun unless you're talking about your personal taste. And it's hard to talk about your personal taste when you realize you're a proxy for a wider audience, right? So. Good there's only one product that I ever was like, I don't know the point of this product. And that's because me trying to be a proxy for the audience, I couldn't find the avatar of person who's going to be able to use this and then be safe and effective with it afterwards. And that's, that's, I guess the the, the gap that I found in in that product specifically. But yeah, I, I wanted to talk to you guys about something that we all kind of struggle with humility. How do you define it? And how do you stay humble being, that you know obviously we're we're creating um um, a newer face of of firearms and you know gun culture right and bringing people Mm -hmm. in it's like okay i'm doing something historic yeah you know i got full autos i got all these guns i've i I know you've trained some people in the past or at least you've facilitated classes on your property i know you're not an instructor or whatever but you have you've been part of silencer shops now at pew culture you've been part of silencer shops uh they did a mini documentary on you who in the world gets a Silencer documentary Co. made? Si- Silencer. Excuse me, Silencer Co. Let me be very clear. Silencer Co. did a mini documentary on you, Pew Culture. Mm-hmm. And of course, mm-hmm. like we, we can talk about all the things that Jay's done, but um, we'd mm-hmm. be here all freaking day. <sighs> so, so you, you know, me? honestly, honestly, I, I, don't think, I don't think it's very hard to, to stay humble when you come from humble, you know? Um, and I think that's one... You know, it's like it'd be saying, how do you stay black? You're, you know, you're black all day, right? Um, you know, so we, we come from very humble beginnings. So my first gun was nothing compared to the, the inventory that I have now. Um, and, you know, I come from, you know, the developing world, they say, right? So come from very, from very humble beginnings in this space. And for me, it's always a pleasure just to look at people who may feel uh, certain emotions that you feel when you're, you know, when you can't afford, you know, what may be the apple of your eye at the moment. Um, to give you a perspective, when I started off, an RMR was was too much for me. You know, an, an RMR on my gun was way too much for me. That that cost way beyond my 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 means. Um, so knowing that it's it's very easy to stay humble, man, because you know it's easy to everything that you see. You also compared it to when you started. That's the thing that you do automatically, right? So when you, you know, when when Jay and I secretly, because so much happens secretly before you guys see it out there, right? So um, before you guys ever saw a helicopter, we were we were all over the place in helicopters, wrapping helicopters, you know. This and they stay pretty pretty hush, you know, for months. You know, no one knows, but we're doing it in the background, right? So but that's a fact. We had, we had to hold that content for probably about three to four months uh, when yeah. you guys saw Pew Culture and I literally uh, the, the promo video for Pew Party 3 with, with Q and Silencer Shop. We literally had to hold that for months. Yeah. Um, so, so when we do these things, 
you know, even between Jay and I, we look at each other and you say, did you ever think we'd be doing this? You know, um, so it's it's because we come from humble, I think it's 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 way easier to remember and it's, you know, to remember when you didn't have the opportunity or the capability to do this and remember that, you know, maybe when you didn't have the abilities to do that, you were not treated in the same way that you're treated now. And that's a reality. That's another thing that we don't address, right? Is that, you know, um, now if I if we go to somewhere and we say we want to rent out your entire facility, they take it seriously. You know what I'm saying? But that wasn't the case at first, you know? Oh yeah. Um so they're ready to so, make some money, man. I mean exactly. you guys sold and, out two helicopters for a full day event. Well, that's a yep. blessing and a curse because now that price that you would get before um before they knew who you are, oh, that price yeah. goes up. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's happened that's, to us before. That's, that's happened to us before, where where we get the we get the poor people price, and then they do some research and they they want to renegotiate. Yeah. Hey, 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 um, like you, you trying to you trying to get over on me, man? So so yeah. so you almost have to go in very humble. You can't go yeah. in leading with I have all this success in my on on our resume right. of throwing events. Yeah. Right. So that, that can hurt you very very fast. You can't you can't you can't pull up in Teslas. You know what I'm saying? You gotta pull up. You gotta pull up in in in, in a hoopty. You know, what I'm <laughs> the um, civic. so and to be honest, we love being underestimated, right? It, it's it. I think it's it's a way better way to go into things as well uh, as being underestimated. Because when people overestimate your capabilities, they treat you a little bit differently. You know, they they, they require more from you. It's just way better to go in humble and in any way in any arena. At least for what we found so far, based on our perspective, that may change, right? Um, but but. It's easy for us to 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 to, to cling to that humility, if, if 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 that was something that I would be able to say. What, what about you, Jay? Do you, do you find do you fancy yourself a humble man? Uh, I I do actually, man. Um, uh, I have children, and children. Uh, nobody tells you your flaws quicker than your kids. <laughs> so, uh, man, I still work for a living. I don't do this full time. So, um my time is very, very, very minimal when it comes to how much time I can actually dedicate to it. So I have to be very humble. I wear a lot of different hats. Um, so yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I still, I still have a honey do list that my wife tells me to do. And, uh, and if I don't do it, then, you know, she's not going to be particularly happy with me. So there's, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, real life stuff that goes on behind this for me. You know, I still have a lot of responsibilities. I still have, good days, bad days, up, down. I mean, so it's, yeah, it's, it's, that's how I, I remain humble, man. I stay busy. I stay focused. I stay focused on the next objective. I got boards beside me where I got one notes where I'm taking notes and I'm just so focused on the next thing. I don't have time to, to, to get caught up in the hype of what I'm doing. Um, that's why we can, we could, we, you know, uh, Pew Culture and I can be in this space uh, so limited amount of time, but we've accomplished a whole lot because we put our, our focus into the next thing. While you guys are still fixated on what we've done, we're already focused on the next thing that we're about to do. And we're putting a lot of uh, investment in time, money, uh, sweat, tears, uh, a lot of sweat equity into trying to make that next thing as great for you guys to visually, um, you know, view and be pleased with. So that's how we stay humble. All right. So what I do want to make sure that we have is an opportunity for people who are watching live if you want to fire in some questions we have a few people in the live audience right now and of course if you're not watching live you're watching after the fact you've gotten to this point fire in some questions because there may be an opportunity in the future for jay or um, my guy pew culture to pull up again or or meet us in in another fashion do a live stream and make sure that we're talking about the things that they're doing and of course answering the questions that you have about what they're doing right um you know, obviously you guys have to make it worth their time. So make sure you pull up. Uh, so here we go. Let's go ahead and um, go into the, the next part of our show. Here we go. And you're back with us. Let's talk about. So if you weren't doing Pew Party, what would you be doing? Because I know there's like a list of, of things that everybody kind of wants to do is like, okay, yeah, we want to do this. We want to do that. We want to do this. What are, what are some of the, like the, I don't want to say fantasies. Cause that's such a, a funny word these days. Or, but what's something that you've, you've 
you've wanted to do, but you just like maybe later or ah, we're, we're doing pee party right now. Mm. Well, I'll go ahead and kick this off. Uh, you know, there's a lot of multitasking that that goes on um, even right now. So I don't I don't know if I have a box near me. It's probably behind me. Um, I'll pull it up in a minute. But uh, I I also did a soft lunch on a proper on, on a product called uh, SD ammunition. SD ammunition is is uh, I'm pushing out uh, nine mil one twenty four grain. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if you uh, have had an opportunity yet, Aaron, to get your hands on some of that. But if not, I'll get some out to you. Um, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm having fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, man. I'm having fun with that project right now. It's, uh, you know, if you pay attention to the social medias, we sponsored uh, DJ Jenkins. Uh, he's a master oh, level. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's amazing, bro. Absolutely. He took some down. He actually won second place in the Florida State Championship uh, using SD ammunition. Also, Barber Training Solutions. He took some over to Puerto Rico uh, for that competition shoot, and I think he won third place there shooting ammunition. Um, I'm also uh, sponsoring uh, Big Homie Scooter the Shooter. Um, he's he's new to the scene, but he is growing in leaps and bounds in his competition shooting. Um, also having some conversations behind the scenes with some other individuals that got, just got sponsored by some really big names. Uh, we're talking about having them um, be ambassadors for the brand as well. So it's a, uh, once again, I haven't did a full big push out on it yet because I still need to Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I need to pull, I need to, I want to, I want to expand to different calibers. Um, it, it takes a lot to invest into new different new calibers. So, I mean, it's a very healthy investment. I would say a minimum of 50 to 60,000 just to, to get all the machines in place and, and to branch out to different calibers. So I have to be very frugal, um, with my, with, with the resources that we bring in or that I'm bringing in to be able to, to launch those different calibers. So it's, it's a, it's a very strategic game especially in a market uh, where we potentially gonna gonna find ourselves in World War three any any day now and you already know what happens when that happens uh, prices skyrocket uh, recently <laughs> get get real get real uh, uh, sketchy you know to find so this is it's, it's a crazy um, industry to try to jump into but I've, I've been having fun with it so far so so far myself and black Rambo are really the only only guys that's really tackling um, the the ammo side of things. Um, thus far with our two different brands but i'm having fun just literally manufacturing uh the yeah. ammo that's one of the product. volume game but go ahead uh, p culture oh yeah so you know um i'm actually actually involved in quite a lot of things um sometimes it's hard to manage so you know i um i'm i'm taking over a position with a night vision network um i uh I'm working with with quite a few entities, you know, to, to test their products and 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 make sure that they're and, and I've been doing that for a while, kind of testing product, giving my feedback, kind of R and Ding stuff. Um, that's that's a lot of of, of what I do. Um, if there was something that I would like to do uh, in the future, outside of events per se, is 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 really figure out a way to to attack the newer generation of gun owners even at a younger age um so you know help help educate even from a younger age uh, whether that's through some type of camp system or or whatever that is i think when we look at things that we would like to do <clears throat> that becomes a us thing i don't like to look at it from a me standpoint, I like to look at it as what is needed out there, right? So study what's needed and then find a solution for it. So as we continue to gather more information on, you know, on the reality is when people come to Pew Party, we're also kind of getting information as well. Right? We're, we're, we're seeing what people want, what people desire, and we try to meet those needs. So as we gather more information, I would like to find a way to bridge a gap with the younger people, but we have to study them first to see what works with them. Okay. Hey, so so yeah. Burnt Nugget asked a really interesting question. Um, any plans for land or a facility? That's something that we've been talking about quite a lot, actually. I was I had a conversation just yesterday with a Cats with a guy who has over a hundred acres of land, but unfortunately, it's in West Virginia. There's no airport close by. <laughs> that is of ease of access for people to come and participate but 
it was such a beautiful property. Uh, it has running water, has spring water on their lakes. Um, the view is impeccable. Uh, and you have a lot of really cool companies that, that we already rock with out of West Virginia. So um, yeah. opportunities come like that a lot. But it, in order for us to invest and also, you know, buy some land is something that we love to do. We've talked about it, but it's all about finding the right location. And um, yeah. this, 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 everything has to has to be perfect. Uh, we would love to stop. I mean, we, we love traveling and, and, and it's a big challenge. Let me let me just say this to take Pew Party on the road every single year. It is it is a very difficult thing to do, but we accept that challenge. And until we find a home, uh, a perfect piece of property for uh, Pew Party, then we, we probably will continue to search for that um, and, yeah. and bring it to bring it to different cities. Um, however, anybody want to donate some land to us, um, um, please feel free to email yeah. me or DM me. <laughs> yeah, it's funny that you said that because you have to be people that people would donate to like who would you donate to to even put that out there and have any sort of confidence in that in yeah. that statement but what were you about yeah. to say now uh so so kind of again piggybacking off of what he said um the one of the things that we have to take into consideration every time we host a pee party is its proximity to a, a, a airport with the bandwidth that can accommodate cheaper flights cheaper flights is 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 a real big thing for us we want to make sure that people can afford to get there so to give you an example for pew party uh two if you got your tickets you know decently in advance i'm talking like just a couple of months out you probably would have paid in the realm of 30 dollars if you if you flew spirit and that kind of stuff right one way right um a lot of people they were they were sharing their 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 tickets that they bought so we we go we search for these areas with cheap flights um, to get to. Um, so if it's, it can be the most beautiful facility ever, but if it's if it's not accessible for common folk, then we don't want it. That's that's how we look at it. So once we find a property that is, you know, is perfect. For example, the the property that we have in North Carolina is not accessible. You know, yeah. we we drive like an hour and a half just to get there. You know, Jeez, bro, I, I wouldn't do it. So, I just wouldn't. Shoot. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's not accessible. Yeah. So we have yeah, to yeah, that's yeah. something that we have to. And we, we, we trust that in time, the right opportunity will fall in our laps. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just to give you guys an idea, man, like we're we're going back to like sharing and making sure we share experiences. Um, we are leaving the the continental United States uh, here shortly, and so we invited um, a couple other individuals. Right, we we invited a couple of individuals just so they could share the experience. We're gonna do something you know cool for us, you know, um, and we invited a couple of individual, a couple of the creatives, right, and hopefully the trip inspires them as well. You know, um, they get to create. In, in that space, and we said, you know, hey, come with us, you know, uh, share this moment with us. Um, so, you know, it, it being able to facilitate all these things for different people is really the greatest joy, the greatest reward, um, you know, if, and we believe that once you continue to do good things, good things come to you. So we think we think eventually that that you know that perfect property will land on us. But right now we just keep we just keep you know putting out the good out there, and uh, we, we're 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 hoping that that opportunity comes to us um, whenever the universe decides it's it's time. Fair. Somebody was asking, what do you see yourself doing in the next five years, 10 years? I know we briefly kind of touched on like, hey, we want to make it bigger and better. And, but mm -hmm. I feel like there's more to say. Yeah. It's, it's, how do we say it without saying it? That's the question. Because sometimes when you put it in the atmosphere, uh, it, it finds itself evaporating. So it's... A lot of yeah. times you got to be very careful. That, that's this is intellectual that's perspective. That's a, that, I mean, yes, yeah. the IP, that's important. You don't want to, you know, put it out there. And all of a sudden, oh, that big company yeah. with the, the means to do it tomorrow, yeah. all of a sudden does yeah. it. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. so I, I mean, I, I, mean I, I will say that we're definitely forward looking. We're, we're mm -hmm. looking forward. Um, 
it's it's evolving. Every, and anyone who's been to the pea parties can see the evolution, you know, the gradual evolution. It's evolving. Um, and a pew party, what a pew party might mean to you now might not be what it means to you in two years, right? Um, because it's continually evolving and we're, we're always looking towards the future. I mean, to be honest, by the time we get to the actual date of the pea party, we're, all, we're, we're thinking two, par, two, two parties ahead. You know, yeah, yeah, uh, we're, we're having we're having we're having meetings. So for it to be to be uh, to be quite frank, um, at Pew Party Two, before Pew Party Two even came, the date came. We were already having meetings on wrapping helicopters. Yeah, literally. Yeah. So so if you recall, if you go back and look at the content, I was telling people at Pew Party Three, we're taking it up. They didn't know what I was talking about, but I already knew we were going to do helicopters for the next Pew Party. So it was it was just something for me to throw in there, so they, so they can look back and say. Wow, he did say we were going to take it up the next few party. It just that wasn't a generic statement. You know, it's, <laughs> it was, it's it's funny that you say that because reality, I don't, I don't think you had helicopters last time. But to no, me, to me, you've always had helicopters. This is something you've always done. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, pew party. They got the helicopters and the machine guns. Like right, it's yeah. right. it, it's special, but you guys presented in such a way where it's like this is just what we do. And so yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, they got helicopters and the this and the that. They they've been doing this. It's, so and, so and you, I, you're I gonna be you take that. Just remember, um, we had this conversation and you asked us what was next, mm -hmm. and we sat here right in front of you, full well knowing what's next. We couldn't tell you, mm -hmm. but when you see what's coming next, you're gonna be like, damn it, I had them right there. I could have pulled your a world. little bit harder. I probably. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can I can I can tell that we're gonna rock your world, right? So no, we're definitely no gonna rock no your diddy. world. <laughs> Funny. I'm like, okay, they said um, rock. Are we are we gonna be shooting from from a rock climbing position? Like what are we what are we doing? I'm like just putting all the hands together. <laughs> it's a it's he's a like, riddle. Like, it's a riddle. He's, you know, um yeah, no, it it's it's definitely gonna be uh, interesting. It's it's going to be an elevation. Um, here you go, elevation. Elevation. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, oh, um, we're looking to escalate the event for sure. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no more puns. <laughs> so, um, no, but it, it's it's really going to be it's really going to be something for the books, and um, you know it. But it's also going to evolve, right? So, uh, one of the things that you mentioned, which is pretty, you're going to find pretty interesting with Pew Party Four, is collaboration over competition, right? Yeah. Um, collaboration in, over competition is going to come in pretty, pretty heavily. What up? What up? What up? I see somebody said, "What's up, Pew Culture?" Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah. So you know, it, it's it's gonna it's gonna be pretty. Uh, it, it, we're going to work on collabing more. So I will say, so here's, a, here's something that we're going to put out the, put out for you guys. Uh, Pew Party One had mm -hmm. a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of smaller uh, entities, you know, s smaller projects. Uh, Pew Party Two had a lot of big names, big, you know, big yeah. companies, major staples in the industry, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then Pew Party 3, you saw less small companies, right? Um, so we're trying to collaborate more with our smaller companies as well uh, because one of the things that we're able to do in Pew Party 2 was put uh, small companies, black-owned companies, uh, you know, uh, LOCs, just people who don't typically have the budget and the resources of these larger staples in the in the in the community, we were able to put them side by side with some of the bigger names in the industry, and that was a huge blessing to those companies, right? Um, so we are we are looking to go back heavy on that side where we're mixing the two, the, the, you know the. So if you have a small project, right, and you think that you are fit for Pew Party. You know, definitely feel free to reach out, right? Because what we want to do, we want to empower every time, and that's the greatest form of empowerment, is by taking, you know, individuals who may not have the resources of the big dogs, and letting them at least, you know, stand toe to toe on the same platform, right? Um, 
some cross pollination of the traffic that's happening from one side into the other side. So when we take uh, an entity like uh, MD Arsenal and put them next to somebody like Q, right? Q is a huge company in the space. Um, put them, put take a surplus army, put them next to the silencer shop, right? Um, that's 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 what we want to we want to. We want to get back to that. So that's one thing I will say. We want to get back to making sure that we take our small minority owned, uh, small, uh, you know, just small businesses, uh, whatever, right? Any situation in which the odds are stacked against you, we want to empower you, mm. right? Um, so so we want to make sure we hit that hard, uh, harder next time. So that's one thing that we can put out the bag is that, hey, if you guys have projects that you're working on, and you want to get it out in front uh, in front of people? Feel free to hit us up. We we want to empower you. Okay, so now that's that's a big promise because the, the truth of the matter is, to if you are a vendor at large events like well like what you guys have like the NRA convention like like the biggest one where you don't even really get to shoot the the yeah. uh, oh my gosh shot show shot show um, shot show yeah <laughs> to to get a booth I mean. A couple of us who um, I was in, I guess I'm still a member of NAGA, but mm -hmm. some people were like, well, you know, with, with NAGA, like, what, what are they spending money on? That, that was like a question that some people had at one point, right? And they were like, well, to even to get a booth at NAGA, it's a lot of money, right? And so to get a booth at Pew Party, that, that's money, right? That's not, you can't just yeah. do it for free. Yeah. Are you, do you guys have something special in mind for the smaller shop who wants to be able to get in but maybe that that booth fee is just crazy or 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 you guys trying to find other ways to empower them yeah yeah so we we, we try to work with them as best as possible yeah. um within within reason some uh the reality is the space that you have at pew party cost us as well right yes. so you know and and sometimes so we find ways to offset that cost for some of the smaller companies right um but the best way is to get on a meeting with us sit with us sit with us and let's navigate because the reality is we had to navigate that ourselves to be able to put down put put you know put on pew party right so i would say that when it comes to triumphing over those those barriers to entry you know we have some experience there right mm -hmm. and we consistently like for example let's take the helicopter it took a lot of money to do that, right? Mm -hmm. So we had we had to navigate a way to generate funds to even bring that to the consumer at the price that we did. Because if you if you go anywhere to shoot out of a helicopter, it, it costs a lot of money, right? So so you know uh, we had to come up with creative ways to generate funds to offset the cost for the individual consumer, right? Mm -hmm. So these are meetings that we have, and luckily because we come from a background where we have to be able to transcend our our fiscal ba uh, boundaries or barriers yeah, to entry uh we're we're uh we're, we're you know we know a little thing about doing it right so we sit with you in your in our meetings and we navigate that we figure out how do we how do we get around this for you right mm -hmm. um and so you know when you go you request a meeting with us and we sit with you and we work with you so um it it it's a lot of people look at the barrier to entry and, and just stop. No, don't stop. Yeah. Let's plan. Let's plan, right? So um, I think I think that's one of the ways that we have to uh, put out to the people that we can we can help you get around some of your barriers. Fair, and I, I think that's important, and I think that's a real conversation to have because there are going to be some smaller entities like we we talked about next year. You really want to try to get them involved on, on a, in a deeper mm -hmm. scale, right? Yeah. It's like, man, okay, well a lot of small businesses, they're, they're floundering, floundering. Like, how do we make sure that they can be empowered to come in and really expo what they are doing? Because Pew Party, it, part of it is an expo. I mean, that's just kind of mm -hmm. the point of being able to go out there, try new stuff, try this company's stuff. But, you know, I, oh, I wanted to shoot the Prodigy, just haven't had a chance. Oh, guess what? Mm -hmm. Prodigy, Prodigy was there. And somehow y'all mm -hmm. made that happen where there were other events happening kind of simultaneously. So yeah. your participants got kind of like a larger dose and even what they were originally paying for. That was cool. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be. Oh, yeah. We, uh, so I, again, what, we just, what did we just talk about, right? Yeah. We know how to navigate around mm -hmm. things, right? So mm -hmm. we know a little bit about that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you don't, you know, people like to box in, 
individuals and say, well, you know, they're influencers or they're this. I guarantee you we do a lot more than influence. <laughs> you know? Um, right. you know, we, 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 we move mountains, right? Um, so definitely if you have, if you have, you know, a challenge to get there, jump on a meeting with us and let's see, P culture, what's the best way to reach you? I have a big idea. Um, shoot me a DM, shoot me a DM, um, on Instagram. So, you know, if you have something that you need to navigate, and this is a problem that we see in the industry a lot is that people don't want to collaborate. There's, mm-hmm. or, or I, I wouldn't say they don't want to, but they're scared to, right? They don't know how. There's, they're scared to, or they're nervous. They don't know. They don't, you know, they probably think you won't be receptive to, to having a conversation. You know, that's not the case with us. You request a meeting, you go to, go to pewpartyevents.com, request a meeting, we will be there. You know, what's, right. what's that one term that they use for the relation, um, parasocial relationships? Oftentimes, even as a business owner, and you know, everything that we do, you have business, you have business, you guys have business together, I have business. It's all, business right and people have kind of let me know like man like i admire what you do i i didn't know what you'd be like but you're a cool guy all i'm like oh yeah what do you think is you think this is a show and the reason i bring that up is not to toot my own horn but to to emphasize that you two are as cool as you like as cool as you present yourselves you're just as cool as in person and even more inviting when it's actually time to you know knuckle up and like let's let's go right so here's (laughs) What I'm going to say, if you're if you're listening to this and you're you know, a business owner and you're like, hey, you know, I really do want to get involved, hit these guys up. And obviously, like what you said at the beginning of the show, um, or at least close to the beginning, try to find ways to offer value because right. like, you, that's just the language that we all speak. It's hard mm-hmm. to reach out to a company and say, hey, I want to do a giveaway. You know, if you're a smaller influencer, yeah. because yeah, give me this. Like give. You gotta, you gotta no, create create an environment where they can yeah. see the value in it. You're not asking for exactly. too much, and you're not asking for pens because that's not necessarily worth anyone's time either. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. If if I were to be able to give anyone any advice, when you talk to an entity, a person, anyone, right? Uh, don't make it about you. Make it about them, right? Mm-hmm. So, if I want to pitch Armed Atlas on something, I don't call Armed Atlas and say, "Hey, you should come to Pew Party." So you can, I don't know, do something for us. Now I say, hey, uh, here's an opportunity for Armed Atlas or, or Costly uh, Pod uh, or, or whatever entity we're talking about to expand this, 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 this. Make it about them, right? Give them an opportunity. Um, if you cannot find a way that your, sis, your, your thing adds value to them, then I don't think you should be having the conversation. You know? mm. Make it about them. So... That's that's awesome. I love to see that. Jay, you have anything to add to that? Oh man, I mean, he pretty much summed it up right there, man. It's, it's, uh, you you can't you can't. I, mean, guys, I wouldn't want to water it down, man. Just it's, it's, as plain as that is, that's exactly what we do. Um, but I, I just want to say to the to the one person who said, uh, "Look, man, reach out to us, man. If you have a great idea, we love great ideas. Let's build mm-hmm. off those great ideas." Um, it is it is situations like that. Like we don't know what burnt nugget is gonna come with, but if he comes with something that brings value, we're gonna we're gonna find a way to implement it and to give him his credit. It didn't come from us, it came from <laughs> burnt burnt nugget. Um so so we live by that man. That's that's exactly yeah. what we do. That's exactly I, what happened it. with that's exactly what happened with White Side Tactical. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Carbon yeah, Carbon Q know. hit me up. She was like, "Like you got to meet these guys. You should you should jump on a meeting with them." Mm-hmm. All right, if, if yep. it's coming from you, Carbon, I I trust your word and I trust your judgment that that's going to be the right thing to do. We did it, and yep. and to be honest, you know those guys, man, they this was their first time on on you know to to be at an on, event on, on, a, on a platform like yeah. they didn't yep. they yep. didn't know what to expect, and and we didn't know what to expect for them. We could only guide them based on our previous experience, and. They took the guidance, they came prepared, and they delivered, and they brought yep. a tremendous yep. amount of value to, yeah, to our so. event. Uh, we'll so much so that, that. It, it is a no-brainer that next year we want you there. You know what I mean? Exactly. Okay. exactly. Yeah, we, we want them there next year. It's a no-brainer because but they that, brought so much value. 
isn't that the beauty in what we do? And I, I want to find a way to kind of make sure that we're wrapping up and respecting you guys' time. But isn't that the beauty in what we do and, and getting the opportunities to for the first time? I, I'm at my first big event. There's so many smaller influencers who who actually punching way above their weight class, actually providing the content, providing information, being a resource. People can right. get in their DMs and they've never been to an event. They've never been to Pew Party. Wow. They've never been to Primary Arms Range Day. They, they haven't been to any of these events where it's like, hey, all you have to do is have a little social media presence and apply and you'll get invited or, or you know, show value, right? And you'll, yep. you'll get invited or you pay your small fee, get in the door and really have an opportunity to be around the people that will change the way you do business, right? Because you'll be able to yep. see it. If you can see it, you can do it. And that's, mm -hmm. that's the hard thing, about, you know, especially when you know, black creators. Two two things. That's that's actually the first time I met you was at a primary arms event. That's right. If you recall. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you're way taller yeah. in person. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So it, it's crazy. A few years back, man, I was I was I remember seeing you, it was like, oh man, that's my man, you know. Yeah. Um and I've I've been I've been wanting to be on your platform and come come actually have a conversation and engage with you because I love what you do. And I, I think yeah. we've talked in the DMs quite a, quite a few times. I yeah. was like, dude, your platform is so dope. Like it needs a bigger platform, you know. Yeah, I, I just remember yeah. thinking I that in those conversations. Absolutely, man. So, um, and to see what you what you're doing and and the growth that you're doing within your platform in itself, man. Uh, keep pushing because, you know, is it, it all it takes is one video to break you to a wider audience, and you never know which one it might be. Yeah. Um, but but you you bring a tremendous amount of quality in, in documenting, um, you know, these collaborations as you put it. Uh, with these different platforms and entities and individuals. So uh, first, I just want to give you credit on that. Um, and my second point, I forgot because it's late. And <laughs> my, <laughs> Well, before we before we hop off the live, and I want to make sure we can spend like five minutes talking about some of the guns that you guys have, but we're going to yeah. post that on locals, so armedatlist.locals.com. It's linked everywhere. Um, but we'll do that right after we get done here. We'll upload it probably in like 20 minutes. Here is some of the cool things that people are saying in the comment section. I'm going to upload this here from uh, Hook'em Horns. Um, been really enjoying the Casa Conversation series. Been shooting for over a decade and sometimes feels like I feel like a unicorn. You brothers are making big waves in two-way community. Loving it. That's Thank you, awesome thank you, thank you, brother. For me, it's awesome thank here, you. and it's awesome that I got a chance to have these two legends on the show virtually sitting next to me. And you, like, who gets this opportunity? Who get Who gets it, right? So everyone who comes to view party, I there mean, that's, go. that's true. So <laughs> right. get a ticket and pull up and hopefully they have like something even cooler than helicopters next time, man. Uh, uh, hopefully you guys will win something, man. I got a, oh, man, you guys man. win, you guys win so much, man. We, what do we give away? Uh, puke culture, like, like $40,000 yeah, and yeah. 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 I we actually would, have a I video. Would, you're going down the list. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, it, it's, it's, I mean, when we, we were, to be honest, we were a little bit uh, full transparency. We were a little bit uh, concerned that we maybe might not have met our forty thousand dollar mark, and then we got a reality check. We surpassed that. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> uh, uh, we surpassed that significantly. Um, so we did. We did quite a few giveaways. Um, one of our giveaways almost totaled ten thousand. You know, just one. You know? Right. So. Um, you know, being able to, to, to put those in people's hands was pretty dope. Um, you know, again, what, what was, what, what was some of your cool experiences at Pew Party? Yeah. We forgot to turn around on you, man. You tell us about yeah, your experience. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. So even just pulling up, it kind of took my breath away a little bit and that sounds hyperbolic, right? But mm -hmm. even just showing up, it made me, cause I've been to that range a hundred times just because I'm, I'm around the Dallas area, I'm like two hours east, but I, I, I go shoot there from time to time. And to see the cars lined up all the way outside the gate and the cars lined up inside as well. I'm like, what? Yeah. This is crazy. These guys really did it. Because there's a lot of people yeah. who say we're going to do something cool. Okay, yeah, it's cool. But ain't nobody really show up. <laughs> like, this yeah. is reality. Yeah. And so, it, like, honestly, I was just like, dang. Are we going to find parking? We found parking, thank God. And then yeah. got in there. And as soon as I, I walk in, it just felt epic. I hear, like, to the far side of the range, I don't know if they were with you or what the heck was going on, but there was a Gatlin gun just go, yeah. like, like yeah, what yeah. would they bring a warthog out here? Like, what the heck? Like, that's amazing. And then there was um, obviously, like, a ton of bays. I got to shoot 
my first cue. That was super cool just because I, the first time I saw Q, I was watching an old talent side video for like six years ago or something like that before he had to transition out of guns for the sake of his business. But that was the first time I saw it. And I was like, Oh man, I've always wanted to shoot a mini fix. Like that's just so cool. And I got a chance for the first time to shoot it at your event. So thank you for that. Obviously getting a chance to chop it up with Twista again. That's always a really awesome thing. Cause you know, like Twista on that Kanye song, like he was always legendary to me. So the fact that he was there and just willing to talk and willing to give me like 30 seconds of his time to get on video, that was really cool. Um, oh my gosh, who else? Just getting a chance to shoot some guns that I, I wanted to shoot. And then the, um, oh shoot, there's um, the user, the UXR. Who makes the UXR? Oh yeah, UXR. PWS. From, uh, PWS. Yeah. I was just like, man, New newish platform, kind of based on the old ACR from Call of Duty. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Like I gotta, I gotta yeah. shoot that. And then even just kind of running into some of these guys who were like, yeah, Yankee Hill suppressors and um, um, Ross Martin, ACC. of course. Ross Martin, yeah. that was that was huge. It, we already talked about that, but that was really AAC. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. AAC. Excuse me. Um, man. Yeah. Surefire. Surefire right there as well. I, I met um, one of the VPs of sales for Surefire. Surefire. He actually yeah. showed me one of his flashlights. He's like, oh, this this flashlight's dead. Let me show you my yeah. personal one. And he took mm, me over to his yeah. car and showed me one of his flashlights. And I'm like, yo, who gets this opportunity? People yeah, go to Pew yeah. Party. <laughs> exactly. People go to Pew Party. And, you know, um, for example, piggybacking uh, the, the PWS, that was their first time taking that platform uh, public outside of SHOT Show. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, we have uh, Ross Martin, first time taking that uh, uh, platform line. public outside, yeah. um, outside of outside of SHOT Show. Um, Q is actually launched right right when Pew Party was going. I think they launched their uh, their their movement where they're it, the same mini fix that you talked about. Yeah. If yeah. you get a mini fix, you get a can for free from Q. Even now at Pew Party and now, right? Who does that, man? Um. So Never you know, that. uh, it it's there's a lot, man. There's a lot uh to to to. And the fact that we can bring this to you, you know, right. um, we're, you know, we're no different than you. And so let's, let's talk about background real quick. Right. Um, there you go. Tell me about your background. So I grew up on a little Island in the uh, Caribbean called St. Croix and mm -hmm. we never shot guns. The first time I saw a gun, it was not in the, in a lawful context. The yeah. first time I ever shot a gun, I was 18. It was a shotgun. And after that, I was like 22 or something like that. Yeah. A handgun. So that that's that's my background. You know, grew up a pastor's kid, just yeah. a normal guy. Try to stay out so, of trouble. Yeah. Christianstead or Frederickstead? The fact that you know that, right? Christianstead. My, my, east or my west? Brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I grew up on the east side. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, fun fact about St. Croix is that there's, you know, there might be a north you know, and, and a South, but that's never Barely. gets mentioned. It's either Barely. East or West, yeah. you know, um, it's either East or West. Um, Everybody from the West side thinks they're better. I don't know. Why. Yeah, 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 <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, but so the reason I know that is because mm -hmm. I actually lived in St. Croix. Mm -hmm. um, I lived in St. Croix uh, for a little bit. So um, I know the, the, the negative ways that firearms are painted there, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a different environment, right? So the fact right. that I come from the islands as well, so I come from the Caribbean, uh, the West Indies, and mm -hmm. to be able to come here to the U S with nothing, right. And, and to be able to progress to the point that we can bring you events like this, where you're shooting out of helicopters, you're dealing with the premier, you know, firearms manufacturers in the country, mm -hmm. in the world, right? right. I mean, you know, I don't know if you if you walked around, but HK was there doing a thing as well, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you know, the the fact that we can do that is also if it doesn't stand for at least some type of motivation for all of us that we can do great things, right? It's yeah. not about us; it's all about it's about all of us collectively coming together under this culture and doing great things, right? Yeah. Uh, each of us are doing great things individually, but when we come together, look at all three of us in the screen. You can barely fit us in there, but you know. It's a great, it's a great site, right? And if we continue to do that collaboration over competition, 
we will continue to elevate collectively. Man. Absolutely. Warms my heart. Go ahead, James. So, so that being said, man, you, you have, I mean, it goes without saying that you have an invite to Pew Party 4. We want you there. We want you there in this capacity, um, pretty much like you came, man, but I would I love you to, to come with your uh, videographers, man, and come and record some content, even do some live stuff if you can. Um, mm-hmm. But we, we want you there. We want you to bring the, your value to, to our Pew Thank Party you. 4. Thank you. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I want to do. Uh, obviously, if the people support it and some people want to see me there, I'll be there. I already told you I'm going, so I'm, I'm going regardless. But you know, right. we want to set up a booth and get make sure that the people who want a chance to like share, like that would be awesome yeah. to just set up a little yeah. table, get, get some mics out, get one of these or two of these or maybe more. Yeah. And let people yeah. have a chance to sit down because you got to sit down sometime. Like you're getting your exactly. steps in, buddy. You're getting your steps exactly. in. Exactly. Maybe you get. Maybe we get you a nice couch that people will be. You know, people will be attracted to come and sit down with you <laughs> just yeah. to sit down. Right. Because yeah. that that that's probably my only critique is like, can we get some more chairs? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, right. But, is he talking about the social? You're talking about the social. Oh, he wasn't about, oh shoot! Oh, yeah, yeah, the social. The social was was fun, but. I'm talking about the. Um, oh like yeah, during during, yeah, yeah, the, during yeah. the main event, yeah, it's like yeah. okay. Right. Yes, right. I saw Mark hanging out, just kind of reclining in a car. I'm like, oh come on, Mark, let's 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 get yeah. you a chair, brother. Like, can can we get can we get this <laughs> right. man a folding right. chair? <laughs> yeah, right. But I mean, well, that's 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 like the only thing. Um, but yeah. man, I'm excited. Pew Party Four is going to be awesome. Thank you, everyone who's joined us live. I want to make sure the guys who are watching you here, obviously, they they know that once. In about 20 minutes, I'm going to upload a video to Locals where I'm going to give you guys like five minutes to show off some of the guns in the background. And I know you got some you got some stuff, but YouTube policy says we cannot touch it or they kill the stream um, because they're very concerned about our health and well-being. That said, mm-hmm. can you tell these people how to find you and how to support what you do? Right. All right, guys. So you can go, you can find us at, uh, for one, PewPartyEvents.com. Let me make sure I plug that website, PewPartyEvents.com. Also, um, at underscore J the shooter on Instagram. Um, also J the shooter on YouTube. All right, Pew Culture. Yeah. So same, if you go to pewpartyevents.com, um, if you need, if, if you're one of the people who have, you know, uh, stuff that you think would be a value or could add value to your entity, uh, you can go on pewpartyevents.com and if you click become a sponsor, you'll get a link to request a meeting with us. Um, it doesn't mean that you're becoming a sponsor, but that's how you would, how, that's how you request a meeting, right? Um, other than that, you can send an email to info at pewpartyevents.com. Uh, on Instagram, you can find me at pewculture. On Facebook, one draw. And um, in general, you can find me at your local ranges. I'd be, I'm, I'm in them streets. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Yeah. Hey, make sure you guys also go follow pew.party on Instagram, pew.party. Yep. Pew.party. Yep. All right, guys. So, guys wherever you're watching or listening, thank you so much for being here. I see there's a few of you who popped into the stream late, man, go back, watch the full stream, share it with a few friends. If you got a group chat that you don't want the government to see, like if it get, if it got leaked, you guys would show up to court, plug it in the group chat because we want to make sure people know about Pew Party. People know about the awesome opportunities that are, are available. If you're an influencer, if you're just kind of a regular guy, if you are a firearms enthusiast, I've met a few of those at the event. That was really cool. That's one thing I I failed to mention is that kind of running into random guys. One of the guys I met randomly is the one who won like $10,000 worth of Q stuff. That was incredible. And I was nothing but happy for the brother. Young dude, just super happy for him. That said, there's a QR code right here. If you like screenshot on your phone and throw it, run it through your QR reader or even take another phone and QR read it, guess what? You'll go over to the locals uh, page and you'll be able to see exclusive content. Most of it's free. So make sure you're watching it there. And of course, it's, if you're watching on like or listening, excuse me, on podcast, it'll be in the show notes. So make sure you he- head over there. Use code free to get a month free on that platform. Guys, this has been awesome. I'm so glad we finally got a chance to do it. These guys have been nothing but amazing. And of course, uh, we'll see you next time. Don't forget to keep it costly.